I'm very aware, having written notes from the universe for 20 years, that whenever I have written a note from the universe that speaks of um, old soul, young soul, infant soul, baby soul, um, there's always a few subscribers who reply, I don't like it. I do not like that. It speaks to hierarchy. It speaks to better or worse. It speaks to good or bad. Uh, I, I think people feel like, you know, if there's old souls and baby souls, um, which one am I? Look, everything is holy. Everything is saintly. And these labels are absolutely crude. But yet they speak to something. And when you understand that something, you have more truth to gain traction with, and you can start making better choices and decisions. Let's talk about um, all that is possible for you rocking these jungles of time and space. And there is so much possible. I want to go further within, speaking to the ultimate of ultimates, goal realization, dreams come true, and that is waking up within the dream of life. And to do that this month, where I'm actually going to take you to the fruits of your hard work and all that the payoff uh, promises you, I want to kind of build an explanation pertaining to the nature of reality. Because if I just kind of take it from here up, then there's not legs under the table. Then it's quite likely you'll have other questions, concerns, and, and things that will sap your power away from you. So with this being the theme, what I want to do this month uh, this week is talk about, you know, young souls, old souls, what's getting, what are we getting at here? What, why is that reference show up? And what does it mean? How can we use it? We can use it because it's not chronologically based. Okay. It's not chronological. It's there's something else going on. And like so many other things when it comes to understanding spirituality, there are labels and names, reincarnation, karma, ancient spiritual contracts that have a very important place in explaining certain nuances of reality. But too often, they're given more weight than should be the case. And therefore, there's misunderstanding. Misunderstanding leads to separation from truth. Separation from truth leads to chaos, quagmire, disappointment, heartbreak not going there. So let's build a case. Let's talk about what's happening here. Uh, and, and I'm going to tell you, I'm very aware, having written notes from the universe for 20 years, that whenever I have written a note from the universe that speaks of um, old soul, young soul, infant soul, baby soul, um, there's always a few subscribers who reply, I don't like it. I do not like that. It speaks to hierarchy. It speaks to better or worse. It speaks to good or bad. Uh, I, I think people feel like, you know, if there's old souls and baby souls, um, which one am I? Look, everything is holy. Everything is saintly. And these labels are absolutely crude. But yet they speak to something. And when you understand that something, you have more truth to gain traction with, and you can start making better choices and decisions. So I, I, I get that the nomenclature here can be abrasive, but there's a point to it all. It's vague. The consolation prize is, you know, no one is absolutely this or that, and it's all good, okay? So, so to kind of get a handle on the nomenclature, um, I'm going to draw from my little book that I wrote 20 plus years ago, Lost in Space, um, just to kind of give you a peek at the nature of reality. Basically, this little book, uh, also, it appears in the beginning of Infinite Possibilities. It's also come out in another rendition, Adventures Guide to the Jungles of Time and Space. Okay, if you, if you have those books, you know. 
speaks to a time and a place where divine intelligence was bored. Okay, as soon as you put words or a story to divine intelligence, there's slippage. Okay, there's non truth. But sometimes it's better to do that to gain a foothold than to just abdicate and say, nobody can know these things. Wrong. There's so much we can understand and peg with regard to the nature of reality, and not doing so is a great disservice to ourselves and our power. So, so it's like that long ago, in the nether reaches of ad infinitum, there formed a council of fearless explorers who had grown bored with perfection, infinity, and unending bliss. That's how Lost in Space starts out. They wanted more. They deserved more. And given their credentials, their history, their divine heritage, it didn't take long for them to come up with a new idea. Instead of being everywhere always at once, which is where they were and why they were bored, everywhere always at once, they created a dimension which enabled them to focus on being a certain somewhere and to blot out their awareness from everywhere else. Suddenly, space was born. They couldn't find each other, so they devised a means to track each other in material existence. Time was born. Um, and suddenly, instead of being everywhere always at once, some could be here, some could be there, adventure and drama unfolded to such a degree they became hypnotized by their illusions and confounded by their own manifestations not even realizing that these were their own manifestations but suddenly thinking that life needed to be contended with instead of shaped and conformed from the inside out it's like life is out there and i need to deal with it remember my talk about forbidden fruit and the original sin last week Okay, so suddenly they react to their own projections, not realizing that they're projections. Because incidentally, in that story, they found that whenever they thought of something in a particular space, it would manifest. Okay, so the, this little book explains the nature of reality in the best way possible, benign, short, to kind of reveal who we really are. The eyes and the ears of God come alive in the dream of life who voluntarily chose to go into this bastion of perfect order to kind of fleetingly believe in the lies, the lies of have and have not, here versus there, now versus later. Okay. These are lies, but by believing in these white lies, voluntarily believing in them, suddenly you're here and you want to go there. Suddenly you have not and you want to have. Suddenly, blah, blah, blah. I mean, you know, it's endless, the drama and the desires and the fears and the dreams that could never exist had you not taken that plunge. And of course, there were physical laws that made these this dream possible and there were shared beliefs that made this dream possible but underneath those shared beliefs and the physical laws were the truths of being that i've already shared with you that it, we're all god that we're creators through our focus our thoughts become things we'll, that there's only love that it's all good that it's happening in the palm of god's hand we're safe so while we might get scared by choosing to go in these jungles of time and space these awesome rocking sacred jungles of time and space, we're going to be scared inside of God. We're going to be safe. And it's going to end like that. We're going to wake up and be like, oh my God, that was so wild. That was so real. I thought I was here. I thought I was Mike. I thought I was Mary. I'll, let's go back. Let's go back. So, so now we've got these illusions that are all made of lies. And if you understand the truth by going within you're set free, your power's restored, but they're so hypnotic. You've got fires to put out and people to fall in love with and apologies to make and, and on and on and on. It's like, wow, talk about a dance in these illusions and outside of these illusions. You know, you can't even get it done in one lifetime, right? And you can't learn it all if you're a guy. You got to come back as a girl. You don't have to do anything, but you want to. It's like, wow, that must be cool. Wow, that might be easy. Wow, I just led 10,000 lifetimes. Uh, with a silver spoon in my mouth. What would it be like to have to struggle at an early age? Let me find out. What would, you know, you have infinite time. Time's an illusion. You could live one billion lifetimes and just be, just 
be beginning and still have forever for before you. You can live a zillion lifetimes and still have forever before you. Yes, I'm getting at reincarnation. It is understood but misunderstood. And to understand the mosaic of life and where you fit in now and everything, let me talk to it very, very quickly. Um, time's an illusion. Okay, we already get that, right? So if you believe in reincarnation, reincarnation as typically taught speaks of before and after. My last lifetime, my next lifetime. I mean, immediately the, f the framework and the structure is failed. All lifetimes are happening simultaneously. There is no before and after. It's like, pfft. and if I'm Mike Dooley this lifetime, and next time I come back as Jane Doe, is Jane Doe Mike Dooley or is Jane Doe Jane Doe? It's like truth fails when you try to put words to it, absolute limited words to it. But it is truer to say that reincarnation exists than it is to say it doesn't. It certainly does not exist as people think of it along a linear timeline. There's no such thing as reincarnation because Mike Dooley will always be Mike Dooley in this realm and beyond. But Jane Doe is part of Mike Dooley's family and began that existence with Mike Dooley's decision so that they're one in the same, but they're different. There's no such thing as reincarnation, yet it's more fair to say it exists than to say, no, it doesn't, not at all. That's my take on that. That's my feeling on that. So, so just as Mike and Jane are simultaneously um, living, so is Mike at three months old and Mike at 58 years old simultaneously living. So even though time is a lie and these are all happening simultaneously, it's still fair to say that there's an infant Mike and there was a baby Mike, a young Mike, a mature Mike, and an older Mike, right? Even though time is an illusion and it's all happening simultaneously, it's still fair to say that there was a baby Mike and then there's an older Mike. Okay, And this is exactly what we can say using words to dress up an explanation of the evolution of consciousness. Okay, it's all happening simultaneously. But if Mike's life led to Mike making choices that created Jane Doe, Jane Doe, then Mike came first, even though it's all happening simultaneously. Look, I can't totally get my head around simultaneosity, but I can still get the concepts down and, and have total confidence in that it's all happening simultaneously. And at the same time, decisions made today will affect manifestations tomorrow. Even though it's simultaneous, we know that. So let's not just say, I oh, can't know all things. Too many people do that. Loved ones I know do that. Nobody can know. Nobody can. It's like wrong. We can know so much. Not know all, but we can know so much and thereby live deliberately and move towards enlightenment and self-realization. So just the way a human body goes through infant, baby, young, mature, old, so can it be said that we as soul creatures playing in the illusions of time and space have more or less maturity in time and space, okay? There's the infant soul, the baby soul, the young soul. These are all arbitrary words, okay? I, I, I've read a book I'm going to highly recommend to you right now, Messages from Michael. Me it's not me, <laughs> Messages from Michael. You can go to Amazon and you'll have it in two days, right? So Messages from Michael is some of the most profound stuff I have ever, ever read, understanding the nature of reality. And the more you understand, the fewer the question marks, the greater your power. The more truth, the more freedom. So I'm going to distill a little bit of Messages from Michael to you in, as I explain. And message, <clears throat> they say that there are five soul ages. Again, the lines between them blur, infant, baby, young, mature, old. And they say that you could even come up with a motto for each of the soul ages, which is kind of funny because immediately you're going to know people that fit that motto. Infant souls that are concerned about survival. Um, for infant souls, everything is me and not me, me and not me. That's not me. I don't care. That's not, if I survive, it doesn't matter if you perished. Okay. It's just me and not, they don't know the difference from right and wrong. Now, again, somebody might be 
quite a long ways in many incarnations and still fit that category. And somebody in their first incarnation could move on to great profound wisdom. So it's not chronology. It's the wisdom you gain from opening your mind and opening your heart and asking some big questions, introspection, going within that we talked about last month. Okay. So, so infants, their motto is let's not do it. Let's not do it. This is compliments of message messages from Michael, not compliments, but you know, I got this, the, these mottos from messages from Michael. the baby souls motto, do it right or do not do it at all. Okay. The baby soul, according to Michael, is all about right and wrong, rules and order, the rule of law, do it right. This is the way, the only way. That's a baby soul. The young soul, according to Michael, do it my way. Do it my way. There's only one right way, and I figured it out. Everybody watch, stand back. The young soul are all about, young souls are all about success achievement, and winning and losing. You know some people like that? Uh, the mature soul, their motto is, do it any place but here. Do it any place but here. Just That's the mature soul. The mature soul is all about relationships with self and with others. And then the old soul, the motto is, you do what you want, and I'll do what I want. The old soul is about the big picture. The old soul is about philosophical perspective. Can, there is not one that is better than the other. They're all divine. They're all holy. The old soul, it could well be said, would never be the old soul had it not been first the infant and baby soul. Okay, so the infant and baby soul is the is the potential of spiritual maturity leading to the old soul ultimately. So I mean, every step on the path is sacred and holy. And we all go through those phases pretty much. Although some could go much quicker than the other has nothing to, has little to do with time and much to do with desire, introspection, big questions, open heart, open mind. Okay, so nothing to be offended about, just kind of interesting, kind of like, aha, uh aha, -huh, aha. Uh -huh. um, so the point of all of this in the month of enlightenment is self-realization, is to realize that it's not just about wherever I am, if I lean into enlightenment, I can get there. Look, if, if you're dealing with right and wrong and justification and guilt and, and these things, this maya, these illusions that, that have no bearing on truth, but a lot to do with the drama created by spiritual immaturity, you will never lean into enlightenment. But no matter what degree of spiritual maturity you have had heretofore, you can see that Right now, you can choose to let that stuff go that's not serving you. You can choose to let petty issues be resolved. You can say, look, forgiveness is a big issue, right? People ask about forgiveness all the time. But it's a moot issue unless there had first been blame. And this is just an example of how to let go of some drama. Okay, if you've got someone who violated you in your life, Many people would say, you need to forgive to free yourself, okay? Better than forgiveness is don't blame. I know that's hard. Oh, my God, it's their fault. Oh, my God, you'd be further along. Oh, my God, that's the drama. Let it go. It is what it is. It's happening in the palm of God's hand. You don't know how or why it happened. You certainly didn't deserve it, but it did happen. Know that there's order. Know that the best is yet to come. Know that you'll figure it out one day. Know that your thoughts become things from this day forward and get your groove on. This is moving towards enlightenment. Letting go and shedding those things that were accumulated from other perspectives for reasons unknown to you now. You do not need to figure them out for reasons that will one day make perfect sense. And it's about 
your peace and your freedom today. So yeah, forgiveness is, is all that. But you can bypass it by not blaming. And all of those other things that you've all been taught about, the drama, it's like, go to the quick, go to the source, be free there. Instead of having to make amends and do some fancy footwork and having to apologize and blah, 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 blah. Not that you shouldn't apologize. You did the best you could with what you knew at the time. Yeah, and mixing up different uh, facets of possible drama right now. But um, what, what comes to mind are a couple of biblical phrases. Seek first the kingdom of heaven and all else will be added unto you. The kingdom of heaven is here. Seek first to see the truth here. And you're going to see it here when you stop trying to wrangle with and wrestle with the, the illusions and the drama in your immediate circle. Rise above. It's okay. There's order. There was love. There was meaning. It's going to make sense. See the perfection now. And for those areas that hurt too much, don't even go there. Don't try to see the perfection. They'll make sense later on. But there's still a lot of beauty in your life and still a lot of power you now have. And this is what to focus on now, to ascend quicker. That stuff will make sense when you get further up the ladder. Okay, seek first the kingdom of heaven. Now, let me make something clear to you that has been part of my life's lessons. And uh, I did at one point have the presumption that everybody's goal would be to consciously live a life within the illusions in which they knew they were dreaming. They could walk on water. They could walk through walls, heal the sick, blah, 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 blah. That, That enlightenment, as I now aim to pursue it, that enlightenment was everyone's goal. Uh, My view today is that it's virtually no one's goal. It is not why we chose to live in these jungles of time and space. It's merely an option. But when you know what we know, man, couldn't be any cooler than that, right? What's going on here is that when we came from everywhere always at once, you know, lost in space, Everywhere, always at once. We were of God, by God, pure God, and we knew it. It was boring. We wanted to fleetingly believe in those illusions I told you about. And by fleetingly believing in those illusions, guess what? Emotion is born. There were no emotions. Emotions are purely human. There's no emotions from God's perspective. God doesn't have a good day and a bad day. God doesn't sometimes get depressed. God doesn't sometimes feel lonely or guilty. It's just perfection and bliss. But it's pretty cool to be excited. It's pretty cool to have fun. It's pretty good to move from depression to joy. It's pretty good to go from illness to health. I mean, all of a sudden, there's all this room for passion, for feelings, for good, bad, and ugly. I like it. I don't like it. I want more. I want less. Game on. Okay, that is the goal of living in these illusions of time and space. And that goal is automatically met by your presence here. It's such a sad thing that the Adam and Eve Garden of Eden thing was called the fall from grace. It's like, oh, man, that just paints it as all bad. Like, we're bad here. We got to get out of here. Okay, that's what I used to think it was like, you know, like this is hell. It's all confusion. It's all chaos. So through with enlightenment, I can just, I can take my body and vibrate on out of here. Say, like, wait a minute. I was there and so were you. And we wanted to be here. We didn't get here through mistakes and folly. We got here through wisdom and creativity. And so the goal is to just be here and see what happens. Maybe you want to fall in love. Maybe you want to heal what hurts. Maybe you want to climb to the top of the mountain. Maybe you want to follow the rules. Maybe you want to break the rules. That's the juice of life. But knowing what we now know, in the middle of that dream, you can wake up and you realize your thoughts become things. Just by being half awake, like we are already, your thoughts become things. You can change what happens next. 
You can get better and better at manifesting. You can get better and better at avoiding pain and suffering and all that jazz. And if you want, you can totally bring God consciousness here. This is the Christ within. This is awakening the Christ within. This is self-realization. This is enlightenment. And so when you understand the drama and you understand it's not bad, but when you understand that you're not a victim of it and you don't have to be knocked about by it, then you start getting traction. Then you start saying, hey, wait a minute. If, I, if this is a dream and I can make anything happen, this is what I want to make happen. And I want to do it faster. I want to do it quicker. I want to do it to a degree that I can help the world, that I can help my loved ones, that I can consciously create on the fly. This is enlightenment and self-realization. Okay, and where is this going? Number one, number one, I want to say, well, okay, not where is this going. Let me just say, this is the age of Aquarius. You know, I grew up and they were singing that song. I didn't know what the heck they were singing. Um, this is the time of awakening. This is the Mayan calendar that started brand new in 2012. This is uh, our time to wake up now because the vibration on earth, for lack of a better word, the vibrations, the love, the wisdom is going higher and higher and higher. And as we know, and we've talked about many who don't want change, typically we would call them younger baby infant souls. They're like, no, I want to go back to when things were better. I want the old days. I want the old ways. Don't bring me change. I don't want evolution. I don't want to change. We already had it figured out. Okay. That's being brought about because the vibe's rising and many are rising with the vibe and many are scared about the vibe rising. But because the vibe is rising, new things are possible. Remember cold fusion that was done in a laboratory 15 years ago and they could not replicate it? There's some channeled work that I've read that resonated deeply with me that said the reason they could not replicate it is because the vibe wasn't high enough for consistent results. But as the vibe gets higher, they'll be able to replicate it. There's certain things that cannot happen in a base, primitive, low vibration world, and certain things that can happen more readily in a high vibration world. Enlightenment, consciously waking up within the dream of life, is one of those things can, that can happen more readily now. Come with me and do it with me. That's what's going on. That's the age of Aquarius. That's the new Mayan calendar. Everything is waking up. While there's change, while there's resistance, while there's massive resistance, the world over to the higher vibration, that doesn't mean we can't carve out our own utopian existence in this very space because the vibration will not be stopped. Okay. There may be more calamity and more resistance, but nothing's going to stop the vibration. Okay, so it's going there, and we can go there with it. That's what this month is about. And where can we go? Man, manifestations before you even ask for them. Health, healing, automatic. You don't even have to be healed anymore because you're automatically vibrating at this high spiritual rate that perfects your body's performance in every imaginable way. Friends, laughter, clarity, no resistance on yourself, no self-trickery. That's where we're headed with enlightenment. That's where this new age is going. Uh, rejuvenation, harmony, financial abundance, a greater desire to interact with the world. As I've said before, and going within. Enlightenment isn't about av avoiding the world. It's about wanting to more engage the world. I mean, the more faces you meet, the more eyes behind which you see God. The more dances you dance, the more abundance and clarity and joy. It's like this is where we're going. Faster manifestations, miracles at a biblical level, health, healing, transcending this is there for you. All right, we have dove into enlightenment and self-realization. Um, I have a challenge for you. Um, other than living more lives to gain 
spiritual maturity. Okay, that's one way to do it. That's the old way, okay? Old school, live more lives. Other than living more lifetimes, please think up three steps, three steps, three assignments, three exercises that you could now do to heighten your sense of awareness, to open your heart and your mind, to raise your vibration. I want you to go within and come up with some little techniques, rituals, just try you love your life in 30 days and you're going to find some. Or just look at some of the material we've covered earlier. You're going to find some. What are three ways that you could become more spiritually mature? Three ways that you can accelerate your ascension into higher vibrations, more truth, the kingdom of heaven, and a wildly easier, more joyful lifetime within the illusions. Because we're not looking for self-realization to levitate on out of here. We're looking for self-realization to totally rock our pants off here and now in these sacred illusions. So think about what those are. Share your answers below. Love in your comments. Thank you so much. Um, and I'll look forward to next week where we talk about raising your vibe, I do believe, is the, uh, yeah, raising your vibe. So you, Come up with three of your own steps, and I'm going to come up with some more techniques for raising your vibe into truth, light, and love next week.